All right, guys, almost... we're going into the heart of earnings. It is pumping out there. How do you approach these events as a trader without losing your shirts? Hey, listen, I, I, right now I'm in one of those situations where I never want to be. I have to root on my stock. I really hate this situation. Here I am. Please go up. Please go up. Because obviously we took some Twitter options into the report. The dumbest trade you could do, buying options ahead of a report. But what me, what we were talking about was that they were so cheap that it was worth a shot, especially mm -hmm. on an idea that we kind of liked. I thought maybe they'd try to sneak one past Elon and maybe have the stock, you know, go up and rub it in his face. And again, it's early. We're seeing, we're seeing what we need. It sold off first, got it back above the VWAP. Now the VWAP traders who were just waiting to buy it for a reason, we're in it from here. So we're we're loving it 3809. We could take some profit already, but obviously if you have options, we have to sit here and wait and still sit under the desk and hope and pray. I hate this situation. But again, we did it with some profits from the week because most of our earnings reports did just like what Twitter just did, and we've been making money playing the real move after the fact. And I've been referencing Tom all week. Tom made these great points on his show a couple of days ago, how we learned not to do this. Because the worst time to buy an option is, let's say, 359 right before they report. Because it's the most unknown moment of the stock's life. So the option is going to be priced at the most expensive point. So not only do you not know how the stock's going to react the next day, but you're paying too much for that option. So you got two strikes against you right there. And even if you're selling premium, you're taking extreme risk anyway, because if you're selling premium, what if the stock has a bigger move than anticipated and you're sitting there and you're getting crushed trying to sell premium? So it's just, just not a great idea. It's probably one of the worst ideas because as Tom was saying, the option prices get absolutely hammered the next day. Sure, if you're selling premium, you've done all right. But again, it's a it's just a double edged sword as CJ was talking. We were talking about it earlier. So again, mm -hmm. what we normally do is we come in and we just play the action. So right now the action was they spiked it down. Take a look at what Twitter did. It went right to thirty seven. And again, if you find this to be unusual, it's not. Even in the face of an earnings report on a volatile stock, it still holds the whole number. Next thing you know, it goes back above VWAP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Buy it right there at 38 bucks. Your stock would have been 37.75. And so far, so good. Now, again, if I was in this trade just to make some quick cash, I'd be selling it right now. But again, this is where the hoping and the praying and the I hope it goes up and I pray it breaks 39.09. I hate this feeling. I don't want to have to be a victim or be manipulated. I want to be in charge. And right now I'm not. Let's see what CJ, are you with Kenny? Do you like to, how do you like to trade? Uh, do you, do you get into stocks before earnings or how do you trade around earnings? Three things I do. And you know, I take a longer view. I take a longer perspective. I don't buy front month options ahead of earnings. Never not going to do it. If I know I want to hold a stock over earnings or an option over earnings, I'm buying a month or two back because those implieds don't go up. Kenny mentioned a couple different things that I love. Think about that 359 comment that Kenny made. If you own an option ahead of earnings, 359 right before that report comes out is when you want to sell it and get mm -hmm. out of the way because everybody is paying up for it. Higher uncertainty, higher unknowns means the volatility is going up. And why mm -hmm. are you betting on something that's a higher unknown? The other thing is the, the uh, spreads, Kenny, that you mentioned. That is, if you're selling the premium below, Garrett likes to sell puts to get into positions. If you know six months from now or three months from now, you want to own that stock, yeah, I'm a little more forgiving on selling that put premium, taking it in, and if it gets hit, make sure I've identified my downside. Identifying the downside is the important part with the spreads overhead or below when you're doing the credit spreads, Kenny. I know how you feel, and we've talked about this before. Man, the credit spread game is not one to be played around uh, earnings because that is when what you take in is less than what you have on the table versus a debit where what you have given is what you've got on the table. So those blowouts can end up costing you big. And if you're doing a credit spread strategy a lot of the time, I can tell you from experience, back in the 90s and early 2000s, I was doing them 
you got to win 90, 95% of the time to make certain that that pays off because your risk is so, you know, out of, out of whack here versus exactly. your rewards. So that, and I just try to stay away from doing them on individual stocks, let alone earnings, do them on ETFs where at least you get away from headline risk, right? That's what it's all about, Kenny. I think headline risk, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. again, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it a little bit more with specific numbers. And again, it's all about risk reward. You know, again, mm -hmm. uh, the, and again, I bring back Tom because Tom made some really great points the other day on his show. And I do watch, I do watch your shows um, about the, the option and learning the mistake. We've done it. We've done it. And we've, I, I used to gamble on options all the time. And you would hit one and you feel like a champ. And then you realize, wait, I just lost the next nine. Okay. But at least if you're buying the options, like CJ just said, you know exactly what you're risking. Sure. We, we put up 600 bucks. We're going to lose the 600 bucks if Twitter doesn't get above uh, 40 bucks today. Chances yeah. are it's going to be a loss, right? Okay. But we've already hedged it. But what we're talking about is this other situation where I used to do where the credit spread and you see these you see these options so far out of the money you're like oh okay this thing's not going to go there and chances are it's not and you take in this little bit amount of money but when you start doing the math if you're risking and again let's let's just use 10 contracts if you're risking $11,000 to make yourself 800 bucks I don't care if you made the 800 bucks once or twice inevitably you're going to get that big hit, like the leapfrog with me, like the Puda Cole, the Walter Energy, the Enron, the WorldCom. It's happened to me. So you can have 20 winners in a row. The one that loses, you get blown out of the other 20. That's not what you want to do. You want to be where one good trade makes up for 20 bad mistakes. That's mm -hmm. what we do. And that's where you want to be. And that's trading after the fact. So when Netflix reports their numbers, you could laugh. <laughs> Look at all these suckers who bought premium. And the next day, when the premium is 70 or 80% cheaper and the stock starts to make a real move, now you can buy those options that somebody paid 12 for, that you're buying them for two, and they go back to six. You've tripled your money, and this guy's still down 50%. So that's what we want to address, and I'm going to address it all day today because today's options expiration, and I'm going to show you how to play all these stocks and all these options today 